Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Our creed at Deep Adventure Ministries is the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And I've been on some adventures. I had a cabin that my family and I built up in Montana, a real rough cabin. We built it right on a grizzly corridor. Uh, and I found, I discovered that there's nothing more gnarly than a mama bear with her cubs. And we have a mama bear with us today. We have Kendra Von Esch with us. We're going to talk about her, her work uh, teaching us to go deeper with God in prayer and also her take on manly spirituality. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Lately, the Holy Spirit has really been speaking to us real, real clearly that we need to reach out to the mama bears. I was having a discussion with our social media people, uh, and they were, and they mentioned, you know, we need to start focusing on the mama bears. And I was like, what? You mean like Goldilocks <laughs> and the three bears, that kind of mama bear? But my wife said, yeah, that sounds good. And then later that afternoon, my son walked in and goes, hey, Dad, remember in Glacier Park how gnarly it was when, when you would come across a mama bear, a mama grizzly bear especially? And I thought, okay, the Lord is really speaking to me about the fierceness uh, of the mama bears and just how many women love our ministry and want to be a part of what we do especially when it comes to the mama bears kind of like being our field recruits to to reach out and bring men uh, to the ministry. So we're putting together an, a, a, a quiver of arrows for women uh, on our website, things that you can, so you can become part of our pack and really have an impact along with us in our ministry of reaching men. So many men, women, they want to reach men, but they don't have the toolbox to do it. Well, we, we're setting that up at our, at our website, deepadventure.com. So go there and join with the Mama Bears. And we're stoked to have a Mama Bear with us today, Kendra Von Esch. She's written a new book called, Am I Catholic? And uh, <laughs> also has a great ministry to um, leading people into deeper uh, contemplative, meditative prayer life, and uh, has a certain take on what manly spirituality is all about. So maybe we'll get to the, a fraction of that while you're here. Kendra, welcome back to the show. Oh, it's fabulous to be here. It's been too long. It's good, good to be back. Yeah, you know, normally we don't have guests return, but you're like you're <laughs> like a boomerang. Yeah, normally we don't, but but I thought I want to get Kendra back on the show because I want to talk about, uh, th th you know, it's really interesting uh, to get a take from a women's perspective about about um, what men need to hear. <laughs> you know, so many men men uh, tune out their the women in their lives, and yet they are the ones that have the most intuitive input and often have the greatest guidance for us in our lives. So Kendra, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks. And I got to say, thank you for inviting a woman to speak to men because I've been trying to do more in the, in the men's conferences and speaking to men because I think that they have no clue how important their spiritual lives are to women because most of my life I had zero spiritual male influence in my, in my life for like, I want to say 40 years or so. All of my friends were very secular. My father was secular, my aunts, my grandfather. I mean, my brothers, nobody spoke about God. Nobody talked about Jesus. Nobody really acted in a real moral way. We were very much uh, secular, worldly people. And when I met a few male Christians, and unfortunately, they were not Catholic. They were Christians from another denomination. But they had, there were three men that had an incredible impact on my life hmm. when I hadn't been found yet. God hadn't picked me up and given me eyes to see. But I remember these three men distinctly because of how they behaved, what they said, how they spoke about God, how they spoke about their wives and their children and how they respected other people. And these were all business associates of mine when I was in corporate America as an executive. Mm. So you can, you, you just be aware that whatever you say and do can impact people all around you, women and little girls of all ages. 
it's amazing. And I don't know if you men know the power of influence and spiritual impact you can have on women who just need to see a man be a man and a man to be loving toward God, loving toward others, forgiving, caring, and just uh, just all around living faith. And it, it's an impactful thing for me. So sorry for going on and on no, about we, that. No, we, we need men I think have the, a lot I think of power. Men need to hear that. You know, my wife Cindy. She's you know we tandem surf together. I left her when we we surf, so she's not she's, she's a rather petite woman. But she says, "Do you know what it's like being around you? It's like bumping into a rock. You know, like she'll <laughs> you know I won't even know, and she's like, boom, she'll bounce off of me. Uh, I think in some ways though, that's what Jesus said to Peter: "You are a rock." And I think mm-hmm. men. Uh, if you if you were to talk about a man's spirituality, one of the greatest things that he can be for the people around him is just a rock, just something that can't be moved by events, by world you know the bigger world events because we're going through such cataclysmic times, and not to be moved spiritually, not to be moved morally. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that is not to be pushed off center. You know, my my children often, Kendra. It's so funny how when my children are not doing that well, they're not really living the Christian life that they should or the or the successful ex- life of excellence that they should in the normal world, they stop calling me. You know, <laughs> I don't hear from them as much. And I know something's going on. But what my job is to be is to be that lighthouse on the rock. So they so if I'm if I don't move, they know how far off from center they are. It's almost like a rubber band as they stretch further and further away into into whatever confusion or moral decline or whatever might be happening to them because all of our children go through that. Uh, my not being moved is a big thing. And I think women alone just appreciate a man who's solid in his faith and can't be moved. Sometimes they just want to, they get upset because he won't move either. But there's something about it, just a man just being a solid rock. I mean, we love our, we love Rocky Balboa, right? We love the, that, that man that just won't move, that he has his, he knows what is right. He knows what the true good is. Yeah. And he just stands his ground. And people are attracted to that. And you don't just, you don't have to be a husband to be this rock. You don't have to have family and children to be this rock and to be this, you know, influence on other women. You just have to love one another as God loves you. And I have had my heart moved by a man coming into mass, leading his family. Mm -hmm. And letting his you know having his wife go into the pew and his seven eight ten children however many he has and then you know anchoring the family on the other end of the pew you know taking the baby when he he or she cries and takes him out and yet at the end stays on his knees prays in thanksgiving and then is friendly to those who are out Mm -hmm. in the in the narthex and this could also be anywhere. And if, if your children play sports, the way that you treat other kids, the way that you treat other parents, and you just have such an ability to be that lighthouse for everyone because mm-hmm. women, I, you know, okay, I'm going to speak for myself because I don't want anyone sending you notes or sending me notes like, don't speak for me. That's not how I feel. But I am so attracted to a man who is rooted in God and acts like it, right? Doesn't say he's Christian and then, you know, swears his head off or treats people rudely or, you know, is just an all around guy that who isn't living the Christian faith. Cause you can tell those anywhere, you know, the, the Sunday Catholics, right. That go into the church and then they never talk about God. You never see them pray a rosary um, and they don't lead their lives in that exemplary way. But when I do see that, my heart just cries out. There was a a man who went into adoration before the whole big shutdown of everything when we had adoration that we could go to. And I know that he was converted just a year ago. And he knelt down on his knees and he had his rosary in his hands, gazing at Jesus the whole entire time that I was there. And I just thought, oh, that is, it's so manly. Praying is a manly thing to do. The rosary is manly. I know a lot Mm -hmm. of men think like the rosary might be for grandmas and women, but it's amazing when you see 
men praying the rosary and also leading their family in rosaries or even watching a man say grace out at a restaurant, I wish I had that. And I want to say I don't. My husband is not on the journey. Mm-hmm. My he's on a journey, but mm-hmm. he's not on the journey where I'm at. I'm way ahead of him in the in the faith department. Well, and that, that's not unusual, Kendra. I think uh, mm-hmm. I think it's a, a lesson to our mama bears out there. The life that you're walking and where you are right now, your husband's on the journey uh, yes. because he put you two guys together. You know, so he's in trouble. But I always say women are kind of like kindling. And that's why when we started our ministry, our bullseye was to aim at men, but we knew the women would already be receptive and wanting our ministry, right? And we, our ministry is to men and women. But when we bullseye the men, the women are already there because women, to me, <clears throat> are more like kindling. They catch fire easily. They have this yeah. openness to the Lord. Men are more like big old pieces of oak. You know, I, you know they, they don't start, they don't, they don't, it's hard to get that big piece of oak to burn. Mm-hmm. But once it does, it doesn't go out. It'll burn all through the night and it burns hot. And so it's not unusual, women, for you to be in a relationship where you're the one that's kind of, you're on fire, and you and you're wanting that man in your life to get going, and that's really why we want you to go to our website deepadventure.com because we're going to give you some some tools uh, that maybe you can you can present to him or uh, ways that you can become that mama bear, that fierce mama bear, and uh, help bring your your husband to the Lord. Don't be surprised that you're in that season right now if you have a husband that isn't quite there with you yet because he'll get there. The power of the rosary, the power of the rosary is the key. We're talking with Kendra Von Esch. What's your best website, Kendra? Well, it's a real creative name. It's (laughs) KendraVonEsch.com. It's V-O-N-E-S-H and Kendra in the beginning, all one word. And happy, you can contact me there, send me an email and we can get to know each other. I am all about walking the journey with others because a lot of my journey, I was all by myself. I hear that a lot in the last few days. Accompany Mm -hmm. one another, not aimlessly, but with a direction. We're talking with Kendra Von Esch. This is the Bear Wastink Adventure. We'll be right back. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. A special shout out to the mama bears that are out listening and, and really have more more mama bears, those fierce uh, women of the Lord uh, with us. Then we have men that watch us. You know, it's, it's, it's so interesting when we go to men's conference, uh, how the women will knock the men out of the way and go, I'm so glad for this ministry. Finally, it's something that um, my husband or my son will listen to or watch. So we're actually actively recruiting you. We've kind of launched that just it just in the last few days the Lord has really spoken to us about the mama bears that we need to uh, recruit your fierce love for God and your fierce love for your family just like mama bear protecting her cubs. Go to deepadventure.com and find out how you can help us uh, and participate with us and how we can give you arrows in your quiver to help you, you know, in in the mission that God's called you to in 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 uh, challenging and calling uh uh 
drawing men to the Lord, men in your lives, like St. Monica did for her husband. But don't be surprised. Once they come to the Lord, watch out. You know, you <laughs> don't, you know, once they get into a deeper walk with the Lord, watch out. We're talking with Kendra Von Esch. She's a mama bear, um, and she has a ministry to, she gives retreats, she gives conferences, uh, teaching on, meditating on God's word, manly spirituality. And uh, she's one of the few guests as we've ever had back as a second on a second time on our show. So, Kendra, uh, what do women want? What I mean by that is, in terms of uh, uh, manly virtue, what is what is it, what is it that women would like to say to their men? If men are listening in on this, all of us knuckle draggers, what can we do to serve our wives better? Okay, so I'll take it from two sides. I'll take it from the woman's perspective. The woman wants a man to lead the house. If you're on the faith walk, you want someone who is a man, someone who's gonna be firm but loving, not mean, right? But stand firm in the faith, believe in what you believe, have the gumption to call out your children when they're not living the faith, or if they're in your own home, to set rules that are aligned with the Catholic teachings. That was one of the things I had to do myself as a stepmom, stepmama bear, mm -hmm. uh, was, you know, cut the the girlfriend sleeping over thing because I knew one day I'm going to have to look at Jesus and tell face him face to face and tell him why was I afraid to have that conversation. My faith has grown. I well, didn't live yeah. that way when I was his age, but. I, I had to say something, and my husband, again— Well, you mean you had there. someone in your family, uh, what, your stepson was having his girlfriend sleep over, and you had to make a stand. Yeah, so their yeah. mom passed away, and then they moved in with us, and they were in their early 20s. And it, it, initially, it was just something that had, you know, they were already having them sleep over at their other house with their mom, and so mm -hmm. they moved in, and that just became something that they did. Didn't really, like, ask, per se, but then it started— bugging me right and mm -hmm. i started talking to my husband i said look i'm <laughs> i can't let this happen this is a mortal sin this is our house and he agreed with me so to the men it's supporting your wives maybe you're just tipping your toe into the pool of catholicism and christianity and you're not really sure about this and so you're watching things and trying to see what this christian catholic world is all about and you've seen your wife really loving god so we need your love and support. And that's what I've had in spades with my husband. I mm. mean, he said yes to me to leave my executive career as the breadwinner to become a Catholic evangelist and speaker mm -hmm. and to get out and share the faith because he's seen the transformation. He has seen me change like 180 in everything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And that's all by the grace of God. That's not me. He's even seen miracles. I mean, I had a marijuana addiction. I don't think we even talked about this bear last mm -mm. time I was on because God hadn't given me the grace to have the courage to speak about it because I was still too attached to the world's view of me. Mm -hmm. And finally, he gave me that that beautiful gift. And my husband was like, are you sure <laughs> you want to <laughs> tell everybody this? And I'm mm. like, how can I not? It's a miracle that he saved me through my consecration to Jesus, through Marian consecration, by the way. It was Mary. Mm. So if you keep thinking about mama bears, that's the mama bear of that's all the mama time. Bear. Yeah, and that's right. She will, if you consecrate your family and your husband and anyone in your, in your life that you want to bring to God, Give them to Mary. Give it all to Mary. She will take care of it. Of course, consecrate to Jesus and also St. Joseph. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. I just did the St. Joseph consecration by Father Calloway. I've heard of him. He no, we just is, we just had him on our show. <laughs> I know you did. Is it? I was just going to say, wait a minute. You did because I was going to send you a note and say he's so great. Yeah. Um, yeah. He is that book, that whole process, I learned so much about St. Joseph. I didn't and know much so about And in so doing, you learn about what men are, what men are, how men are called, what men are called to be. Men are leaders, Kendra, whether they like it or not. Exactly. Um, if you look behind you, the pe people are following you. You may not even know it, but where are you leading them? Are you leading them right. to, uh, to, to the bar? Are you leading them to just talk about sports? Are you leading them just to strive hard and get the corner office with the real plants? What, where are you leading people? You know, and, and the, you know, I remember eight or nine years ago, the Lord gave me the world word, step into the breach out of Nehemiah. 
that men need to step into the breach where there's been a breach in their homes or a breach in society. It really runs right through the house, that men need to step into the breach uh, in faith and in prayer. And then, then the Lord began to speak to me about standing our ground. Once you step into the breach, to stand the ground. And that's that image of that lighthouse that can't be moved, you know. But now, yep. in the last week or so, the Lord's been speaking to me about taking new ground. It's like it's time to move out. It's time for the 300 men of, of Gideon's army, the 300 men of Thermopylae, the, the cave of Adullam, the band of warriors that gathered at the cave with King David. They weren't warriors, by the way. They were misfits and, and people that owed money and <clears throat> running from the law. But God gathered them into this cave of misfits and created a, a mighty band of warriors. So we need our, our men to start to come together. And we have, a, we have a men's conferences all over the country now. And uh, there's the That Man Is You program that is so great to help start it here in Hawaii. And then there's um, the Bears Man Cave. There's also something called the Council of Men, uh, Council of Man, or the Council of Men uh, by some brothers. I think they're in Oklahoma. I love the Adam Minahan and David. Uh, have this younger a younger group of men that uh, have a secret Facebook group. Bears Man Cave, we have men that uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and they join the Man Cave, and it's a cave of Adullam. It really is. It's, it's a place for men to say, look, I'm ashamed of this challenge that I have in my life, or uh, I'm, I'm struggling in this area, or um, and then they find out they don't have to be afraid or ashamed because we've all been there, we've all been through it. And when we help each other and challenge each other, we have... We, we post all the time to, to our secret Facebook group. And, uh, and then we have Zoom video meetups. We've been doing that for about three years now, Zoom video meetups, where we okay. see face-to-face -face whenever I feel like it. Every few months, every few weeks, I mean, I'd say it's going to be Tuesday at 7 or Saturday at 9.30 at night or whatever because we're people all over the world. And the men are coming together. And then the men in that man cave actually are starting uh, caves. Like I have a cigar smoke here in my house every few weeks too. Well, I get some Christian men together. We have cigars and, and uh, you know, shot of whiskey or whatever they want to bring, unless they have problems with drinking in moderation. But it's, you know, we need, men need to be joined together in the cave, the cave of Adullam. But you don't just hang out there. When Elijah was, when Elijah was all feeling mopey and saying, oh, God, there's no one left to serve you but me, he said, yeah, we well, have yeah, got a hundred hidden in other caves. And by the way, here's a job for you to go out and anoint this person to be, uh, you know, in, in charge of this one area. I think he was a king, a small king of some area. So, so men, it's time to come together as men and not mm -hmm. just to step into the breach, not just to stand your ground. We need to take new ground. We need to bring other men to the gospel. And, and don't be afraid to speak to women either. If you see a woman that's broken, who is absolutely, you know, insecure, fearful, partying i mean talk about drinking without moderation that was me i was the one that was closing down the bars and i had a one of the three christian men came up to me the next day and said do you remember what you what you said i was like uh when you know mm -hmm. like i mean i was i was i was out a long long time and he just said, oh, okay, then never mind. Didn't judge me, didn't get all in my kitchen, but he made me think like, wow, this guy cares enough about me to come over and kind of check on me the next day. And so it took me a few weeks to go back to him and say, what did I say? Because I was truly embarrassed. But I believe that that was this Christian man following the, ho the Holy Spirit and speaking to me. And I think... You don't have to be, I know it's the weirdest time where you don't, you feel like you might get called out or, oh gosh, she's going to be thinking I'm hitting on her or inappropriate with her. But if you do it with love and charity without judgment and, and any creepiness about it, it's <laughs> just from love, <laughs> Yeah, they're going to thank you. And then they're going to be like, wow, that's like the first man who's ever really cared to say anything about my obnoxious behavior, right? Yeah, for, you know, kind of brought a little bit of... Uh, correction and, and also affirmation. We're talking with Kendra Von Esch. What's your website again, Kendra? Kendra Von Esch.com, V-O-N-E-S-H, all one word. Kendra speaks at, at, at all kinds of events all over the country, and actually she's been speaking to some men's conferences lately. And uh, so she has, a, she's been, she has a new book called Am I Catholic? We're going to talk a little bit about that when we get back. This is Bear Wozniak, The Bear Wozniak Adventure. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. 
Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, one of the things where we have Kendra Von Esch with us today, she has a new book called Am I Catholic? And... Um, but we were reflecting on how uh, women can receive, need to receive ministry from men. One of the beautiful things about, about my wife, Cindy, being with my wife, Cindy, is when we're out together, I can say a beautiful, affirming thing to a woman, and I can speak to little children. But in our society today, today I can't say, I can't, it's hard for me to speak a real affirming word to someone because they might get the wrong impression. But when my wife is there, I can, I can affirm uh the virtue or whatever I see in another person. I can, I can even bend over and speak to little kids. It's really interesting how man has to be, has to be careful that way and affirming. But I had this interesting experience when I was in Cleveland. There was a big uh, Christian music festival there in the summer when we were filming last year, Long Ride Home, which, by the way, we just won a Tally Award. Uh, Yay, for, yeah, congrats. yeah, it's so cool. But uh, we, uh, I interviewed, I saw someone out, outside as she was coming in. And for some reason, she kind of beelined to us, maybe because we had the cameras. And uh, she confessed to me, that only the second person she'd ever told that she'd had an abortion. And I asked her, if there had been a strong man in your life, whether a friend, a father, a stepfather, a brother, if there had been any strong male support in your life, would you have had that abortion? The answer was no. And the thing is, I see so many men... Uh, so quick to judge, oh, that woman, she had an abortion, which of course is, is, is horrifying. But men are so quickly, easily blame other women, blame the women. But why aren't, if the men say they're pro-life, we have, I posted this in the, in the man cave the other day. So you say, you say you're pro-life, uh, what are you doing about it? If you're pro-life and all you, all you are is, if all you say is I'm pro-life, then all you've got an opinion, no one follows people with opinions. Right. They follow people that are leading. So that's just an example of a man that will stand up and be there for a woman, you know, in a time, you know, at a time of, of need. Tell me what your book, um, am I Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> Anything but Catholic. Yeah, really. what's that? What does that mean? Where'd you come up with that title? Because, you know, it was funny. Um, I started the, when I first put the book out, I actually published it through create space and threw it out on Amazon just to get some reaction. And I didn't title it. Am I Catholic? It was called where you are at. And then of course I got a lot of people saying you can't end the sentence in a proposition like at, and I oh knew that. Oh my gosh. All those. Yeah. yeah. Hilarious. Um, but I kept it, um, the, the least likely person to find God was my initial title. And it wasn't until I was come, you know, I, I received feedback, I got some revisions, and I went for my second edition. And it was at that moment that I started owning my Catholicism. Mm. And I said, I know I'm probably going to cut down so many viewers or readers, I should say, that would be checking out this book because the word Catholic is in it. But darn it, I am Catholic and I want to shout it out and I want to put it on the cover to say, like, am I really Catholic? Like, what does that even mean? Yeah. So it's my journey to the faith, my struggle with every single teaching because I wasn't living any of them none of them mm. and finally realizing that oh my gosh these teachings are correct and how i needed to humble myself to go to god to change everything i mean even down to my my speech i was a f-bomb dropping swearing every other word kind of chick can't, i can't up. imagine that can't imagine that <laughs> 
<laughs> growing up with a couple hockey brothers, uh, you know, I was just like, I was raunchy too. Bear, I was, I would say things that would make men blush. It was just who I was. And I thought that that was what it made wasn't me. who you were. It was what you had affected. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I remember one man, speaking of a man, another one influencing me. Um, he was my uh, peer. We were both executives and I was on a phone call with him and I am dropping the F bombs, every other word. And for some weird reason, the Holy spirit that I didn't know at the time mm -hmm. I wasn't on the journey. I, I said, how come you don't swear? I mean, I'm at the boardroom with a bunch of men and there was swearing going on all the time, but he never swore. And he said, I choose not to. And that just threw me back like, huh, I don't think I can stop even if I try. So I apologized to him and I said, I'm really sorry for so much swearing. He's like, that's OK. But this is the man who talked all the time about his wife, all the time about his children. His weekends were family centered. And you just knew, like, this is an upstanding man who didn't it's, need to swear to, to get any It's so any kind interesting of how this, this conversation keeps going back to that. As you were not a Christian, or I don't think you were functioning as a Christian, and, and they eventually became a Catholic, how men really did, didn't have to say a lot to you. Just the fact that they were living uh, a moral life and living a strong Christian, leading by example, and from mm -hmm. time to time saying saying something that... The, the Im impact, man, that you have on, on the world. Um, you know, I had someone when I was younger come up to me and say, you're always preaching at me. And I go, I've never spoken to you about anything. But it's just my life, you know, that I would I would go out at noon and, and, and walk and pray. I wouldn't be sitting at lunch and talking garbage about women. You know, I, it was just, right. why are you always preaching at me? I never said a word to this person. But just, <laughs> just being an example, and I remember I have... Two, I have a friend that uh, was a Baptist and became a Catholic, really cool guy, Tim McCormick and my, uh, my friend Jerry Cohn. They said, when I was in, young in, in college, I had this tremendous conversion experience of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. And they said, when he found me again on Facebook through my sister, uh, he said, the one thing I always remember about you that was so unique was that you had this high regard for women. And so men, when you're with other men, and they're going to talk in a derogatory way about women, even, of course, if women aren't there. Your job is to get up and walk away you don't, or, or, or confront them. And I remember my boss at one point said, why aren't you joining us at lunch break? Why aren't you joining us uh, at our coffee break? It's, it's our time of bonding as a department. It have to be all men in an internal auditing department of a Fortune 500 company. It just happened to be a small group. And I, and I told them why, and he immediately put a stop to that behavior. You know, so so okay. leading by example and standing your ground, uh, and then and then taking new ground. You in your um, ministry, you have a ministry of teaching people how to go, how to kind of like the beginning steps uh, in, in meditating on God's word and going deeper in prayer. Which every man needs to be able to go deeper with God in prayer, intercede, and also to hear the voice of God, to sense when God is giving them leadership, giving them direction. What what will you tell people as they're starting to learn how to meditate on Scripture? Oh boy, man. So I didn't have a clue how to pray. My prayer was my prayer <laughs> and I'm using air quotes over here is was Lord, can you please help me get? Can you please give me my whole life? And when you say I wasn't living any kind of Christian life, I wasn't. I didn't know who God was. I didn't know Jesus was God. That's how sad this was. And I was a confirmed oh. Catholic. Wow. Right? Yeah. yeah. I only thought Jesus was God's son. And oh, by the way, I didn't have a clue why he even died for us. Mm. So this was catechism for me. I was confirmed. And then the minute I could and I moved out, I didn't go back to mass. I didn't go to church service of any kind. I wasn't even a priester, my man. I wasn't mm. even going to Christmas or Easter. Mm -hmm. I was completely on my own thinking, I don't need God. I'm climbing that corporate ladder. I'm, you know, running an IT department for a $1.2 billion global company. Like I am, I made it right. A couple houses some boats and wave runners and I am miserable. Yeah. I'm miserable. And when God found me and through my 26 year, many mortal sinned confession and the miraculous grace that I received that day. And when you went to confession, mm -hmm. I've heard so often that that's the moment when people their heart breaks and the, and, and the love of God pours through. Tell, t tell oh. us, just tell us about that moment. 
Okay. What, so, what brought you to that moment, first of all? Well, I stepped foot in the church in Easter the week before. And at the end, and I'm usually, <laughs> when I would go to Mass, we would be ducking out after communion. I had no idea. Just, that like, was the, just like Judas, leaving yeah, early? Leaving early? Absolutely. <laughs> Didn't even know that that was Jesus present in the Eucharist, right? I just mm. thought it was bread. And my family and I uh, were all sneaking back out because we're only going on Christmas and Easter. And I never knew there were announcements at the end. So when I went back to eat to, <laughs> to right to Christmas, or I'm sorry, to Easter service in 2013, I was by myself, all by myself, scared to death. I don't know what this mass is all about. And I stayed for the whole mass. And of course, they say we have announcements. So have a seat. And I'm like, OK, what's this all about? And so they, they mentioned Divine Mercy Sunday mm. that they, which I don't know what Divine Mercy Sunday is, they're going to have confession. And so that was a moment where I didn't decide to go, but everything just kind of went quiet and silent around me. And I thought, oh, my gosh, what if I walked out of here and I died? Like, would I go to hell? And I'm thinking, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I know some of the commandments and I know I'm for, I've done them all with the exception of killing, broken them all, I should say, without without killing someone. So no, we're, I, talk, we're talking with Kendra Von Esch. Your website again is what? KendraVonEsch.com. Well, when we come back, um, we're going to hear more about Kendra's uh, confession. She's going to tell. She's going to tell us all the sins that she committed. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> but, I'll, I'll go there now. I don't have a problem. I'm just, I'm just kidding. We were shooting a uh, an adventure retreat one time, and everyone was mic'd, and then we had a confessional a tent. And so one of the guys went in there with his mic on to the confessional tent, and of course we turned it off, but we made him think that we had all heard. <laughs> Oh it's, it's, no! You which, guys are so bad. Which led him to, con led him to kind of commit some more sins and had to go back to confession again. But no, we 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 let him know. We're talking with Kendra Von Esch. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be right back. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at DeepAdventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. You know, we have a we would make a big effort to get our radio show on YouTube also. It's available on all kinds of podcast apps. But it's real cool when you can go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak YouTube. Uh, my last name, by the way, is spelled W-O-Z-N-I-C-K. If you go there and subscribe and get that little bell to ring, then you can see, uh, you can see us talking. And you, it's a really great way, by the way, you mama bears out there. It's a real great way for you to press the share button and share some of these 
these uh, YouTube videos with with uh, the men in your life, of course, with your whole family. But it's a great way to kind of to kind of begin the conversation. You know what we do in our family is uh, each of my, especially my sons, are so interesting that we'll actually have kind of watch parties where they will say, "Hey, I got this really cool video I, I want you to watch," and uh, and I may I may not be interested, but I'll watch it with them, and then I can say I've got a real cool. Um, uh, Peter Kraft, uh hour-long seminar that he gave. Let's let's let's, uh, let's let's watch that and talk about it. So you can have a way to introduce uh, the, this great message of the gospel to uh, the people that you love, and especially the men in you, your lives, by going to the YouTube channel and subscribing. And then whenever a show comes on, we'll notify you and you uh, through your email, and you can share that with the people that you're that you are wanting to draw into a closer walk. We're talking with. Kendra Von Esch, she's talking about when, as she was raised a Catholic but was under catechized and later on in her career when she was so successful, uh, found that, that her life was kind of empty and she decided it was time for her to go confession, go to confession and she's going to tell us all the gory details. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I mentioned before the break that I didn't decide at that um, Easter Sunday to go to confession. As a matter of fact, I just had a moment of reflection which I never, ever did. I mean, my entire life was filled with something. Radio, TV, you know, noise. I even mm. slept with a fan. I liked the white noise. So my mind was never quiet. I never, mm. I was afraid of the silence. So for that mm. moment, for me to kind of sit there and everything to kind of go dim and think about my mortality was quite unique. And I believe that was God stirring in me. But that following Sunday, I just went to my normal. This is my second Sunday back in the church after being away for 20 plus years. Um, I went out after mass, 730. My husband and I go golfing and I have a lot going on in my life. Stress at work. My neck was so sore that I left after the third hole. And I said, I got to go home and just lay down on the bed. So I'm laying mm. on the bed. And God, this voice, it's not, it wasn't an audible voice. It was this thought in my head, but it was so loud, was confession at 2 p.m. after Spanish mass, because there was a Hispanic mass um, uh, later in the day on Sunday. And I'm like, where did that come from? I, I didn't have a clue who the Holy Spirit was. Remember, I didn't even know who Jesus was, let alone the Holy Trinity and the Holy Spirit. So I roll over and I look and I see it's one o'clock. Mm. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can make it. And then I thought, all right, well, maybe it'll make my neck feel better. I'll just go, you know. So I grabbed a pen and an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And I just started. And that going. wasn't that wasn't a long, uh, enough paper. <laughs> Correct. I mean, and I'm not, I don't write big. It was regular penmanship on both sides. I filled up and I folded that puppy up. I put it in my purse so nobody could see. And right. Burn I, it afterwards. I yeah. I got in the car. I was like, oh, my gosh. And I'm thinking I am going to get my lunch handed to me the minute I get in there reading this long. The priest is going to be so shocked. He's never heard of anything like that before. Yeah, right. I'm, so <laughs> I have to tell him I, I stole, that I watched pornography, that I had sex before marriage, sex during marriage. I committed adultery, um, that I, I didn't even know some of the mortal sins that I had committed. So, I mean, there are uh, self-gratification, all the things, the sexual mor morality things were big. Um, lying, talking behind people's back. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But so I, the minute I knelt down, I said, bless me, Father. For And I only remember this from the movies, by the way, mm -hmm. what to say here. I don't look up the examination of conscience. I don't even know that that exists. Mm -hmm. So I'm on my knees and I'm like, bless me, Father, for I have sinned get a load of this it's been 26 years since my last confession trying to make a joke out of it mm -hmm. and this voice that comes through <laughs> on the other side was so beautiful he says welcome home and i was like Ooh! I mean, just <laughs> tears coming down streaming hitting my page on my piece of paper i was now i couldn't see i had so many tears the lump in my throat was so big i could barely talk now the ink on the page is all blurry and i must have been in there a half hour i'm sure the people when i left thought that i murdered someone <laughs> for sure but if anyone is afraid to go, I went in with this fear, like I said, of having my lunch handed to me, to this love and this mercy and this outpouring of the Holy Spirit just fill my body, 
mind you, I've taken a lot of drugs in my life and I could have taken them all at the same time and never felt that peace and ecstasy almost. Well, and I is, ended up... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. No, the no, thing is, is that, that what's interesting is you had a sort of life of pleasure, but you didn't seek a life of happiness. It's two different things. Because pleasure yeah. is only for the moment when you're yes. experiencing that thing. But happiness, that happiness that you felt at confession didn't go away after being like a high. There was a clarity and a knowledge deep in your heart that was a joy that continued to spring forth afterwards. That's the difference between happiness and pleasure. You know, Bear, that's key. I went back to the office, this cancer toxic place the next day. This was Sunday, Divine Mercy Sunday, and people were coming up to me and saying, dude, what is up with you? Like, you are radiating. One mm. woman even asked me if I was pregnant. That was how God was just radiating out of me. And I'm like, I don't know. I went to confession. Like, I must be Catholic. I was sharing it with everybody, how incredible it was. And you're right. It was not a fleeting moment. Well, so many it people... God-given joy. So many people say, I don't need to go to a priest to go to confession. I can go to Jesus to, mm. to go to confession. What is it they're missing out on? I mean, I know we can go to Jesus and ask him to forgive our sins. What, what are they missing out on? The grace. You know how many times... The, I laid on my bed asking God to forgive me for the stupid things oh. that I know I did. Mm. Right? I'm like, oh God, I, no, I'm so ashamed. I'm, you know, I just had a one night stand with someone. Oh my gosh, God, this is so bad. Can you please forgive me? Yeah. I never felt that <laughs> way I'd felt when I was in that sacramental reconciliation. That's why God gave us the sacraments of the church. He it's knew so that we did that healing in confession from the priest it's so profound i mean <sighs> I, I mean you can I go every week now <laughs> yeah, i was gonna say i do every I, there was a, single week there was a time when i would go every day because i was dealing with anger there was someone who was really in my life that every that day might they, be they, every, 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 by the way but <laughs> no every day they were provoking me and so uh, the way i dealt with that was just to go to confession and just and just it kept me it kept me focused and, and, and resolute until that that I, I was able able to deal with it properly and over and overcome that. But you know, for me, going to confession is like skydiving. You know, it's like I really want to go like when I when I ask someone, You wanna go skydiving, they go, Oh yeah, everyone says, uh, Oh no. yeah. <laughs> but um the way I test if they're gonna go or not is I'll shake their hand and if their hand is clammy, then I know they're really gonna go. Like they really mean it. They're scared, you know. When we did it, when we did Long Ride Home out here, we had a, a scene with Father Scott Searcy from my church in, in when I'm in in Florida, the Holy Name of Jesus, and we we had this every every couple hour every couple twice a day. I would ask everybody, so everybody's ready to go skydiving on the last day, and everybody'd say yeah, but Father Scott didn't know he was going to be the only one that jumped, and everyone was <laughs> supposed to say yeah, but we were setting him up. But when he jumped, he was the only person I've ever gone jumping with who didn't had no nervousness about him but when you go skydiving there is that time of preparation and you're like okay i could die <laughs> you know and mm -hmm. then and then you, you you pack the chute get all ready you go up in the airplane it's circling it takes about 10 years for it to get up to the proper elevation and the whole time you're nervous that's what it's like for people that haven't been to confession for a while it's like i know i need to go your hands start to get clammy and then you just say i'll oh, forget it it's not, i'm, I'm going to be too busy this this saturday or whenever it is but if you if you get in that if you if you go to that church, and then you get in that line, just like jumping out of the plane, the plane gets emptier and emptier, <laughs> and then yep. it's just you, and then you make that leap, stepping into the confessional like you do when you jump out of a plane. I remember when my son Jeremiah and I were jumping, uh, his first jump, and uh, everyone was empty except for three of us. And the one between Jeremiah and I lost his bowels. He chickened out and just totally lost his bowels in the plane. So we all wanted to jump out. <laughs> D don't be that person that stinks up the plane. Don't be that person who's ready to wallow in their own sin. Mm. Take the mm -hmm. courageous step to, to pray about it. Go to church. Get in line. The door opens. Take the leap. Because most every video I've ever seen of people when they're jumping, their face just lights up with glee. And as you free fall, and then the canopy opens, and the sense of peace is so profound, and you have this perspective from a mile up of things you see things like you've never saw before because all that 
mess is cleared from your head. And then when you land, you feel like you can conquer the world. That's what mm -hmm. confession is. Kendra, we've run out of time. You didn't get to tell us all of your sins. I'm so disappointed. Kendra Von Esch, <laughs> where can people find you? At KendraVonEsch.com. That's Vaughn with a V-O-N? Yes. And you and you speak all over. You even do virtual conferences and, and uh, lead retreats. Virtual prayer programs. And uh, talk about YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. What is and it? It's uh, Kendra Von Esch. So it's YouTube forward slash YouTube.com forward slash Just C. Just Von look for Kendra Esch. Von Esch yes. with the O in it. And, and you'll I'm going to go subscribe. live soon so we could talk and interchange and interact. And it's, I'm all yeah. about just getting God out there in every stretch of media that we possibly can. Just like Amen. Amen. You, We're glad to have one of our mama bears join us today. Kendra Von Esch, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. That's right. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.